During the 10 years that I knew him up there, he was the most revered man in Washington. For nearly 50 years, Sam Rayburn represented the 4th District of Texas in the United States House of Representatives. For 17 years, he was its speaker, longer than anyone else in U.S. history. His fingerprints are on some of the most important legislation of the 20th century, legislation that brought economic opportunity and equality to Americans. Even though he worked with presidents and world leaders, Rayburn never forgot his roots as a cotton farmer in Northeast Texas. Sam Rayburn was born on January 6, 1882 in Tennessee to farmers William and Martha Rayburn. In 1887, the Rayburns headed west to Texas, seeking to improve the family's prospects. But life in Texas was just as hard. People didn't have electricity, they didn't have running water. Uh, those things were things that Rayburn, I think, remembered all his life. Rayburn's life changed when, as a teen, he heard his local congressman, Joseph Weldon Bailey, speaking at a rally in Bonham. Inspired, he announced to his family he intended to become Speaker of the House of Representatives. To help achieve his dream, in 1900, Sam left the family farm for Mayo College in Commerce, Texas. After graduating in 1903, Sam made ends meet by working as a teacher. Three years later, a seat in the Texas House of Representatives opened. At 24, Rayburn won his first election as the Democratic state representative from Fannin County. Rayburn arrived in Austin full of energy and ready to fight for his district's interests. His strong sense of right and wrong earned him a reputation as an honest and ethical statesman and the respect of his fellow legislators. Four years later, House members elected Rayburn Speaker of the Texas House. At age 29, he was the youngest in history at the time. Yet Rayburn still looked to the national political stage, and in 1912, he ran for an open seat in the 4th District of Texas. He won the election and took the train to Washington, D.C., where he quickly caught the eye of fellow House member and Texan John Nance Garner. Garner realized Rayburn's potential, became his mentor, and later was indispensable to Rayburn's rise to power. After World War I, Republicans replaced the Democrats as the majority party in Congress. The 1920s saw Rayburn and the Democratic Party waiting in the wings, but Black Tuesday and the Great Depression ushered the Democratic Party back into power. The country sought a new political direction and found it in Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. In 1931, Rayburn became chairman of the House Interstate and Foreign Commerce Committee. He led the fight to solve the major economic problems facing the country. Much of the legislation Rayburn oversaw during the 1930s continues to have an impact. One example is the Rural Electrification Act. Providing electricity to rural areas nationwide, the REA brought power and economic opportunity to people on farms and small towns. Throughout the New Deal, President Roosevelt found an ally in Sam Rayburn. Rayburn's actions gained him notice as a man of strong character who could successfully bring solutions to America's problems. Rayburn's reputation for leadership helped him achieve his dream in September 1940, when members of the House of Representatives unanimously elected him Speaker of the House. House will be in order. Rayburn's ability to face adversity head on would soon be put to the test as the country entered World War II. December 7th. 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Rayburn led the House to appropriate funds to supply the armed forces. One appropriation involved the Manhattan Project, the top secret effort to build a nuclear bomb. Rayburn utilized his image as an ethical legislator to secure in secret funds for the atomic bombs which ultimately ended the war with Japan. Toward the end of World War II, President Roosevelt passed away. The job of finishing the war fell to the new president, Harry S. Truman, who had a key ally and friend in Speaker Sam Rayburn. Speaker Rayburn worked in cooperation with the Truman administration to restore the nation to a peacetime economy, while at the same time maintaining the prosperity of the wartime economy. Truman also looked to Rayburn to support his efforts to rebuild Europe following the devastation of the war. It was during Truman's administration that Rayburn eclipsed the record of the longest-serving speaker in history. 
In 1951, President Truman presented his friend a gavel to commemorate the occasion. Although their relationship was a successful one, conservatives in Congress, along with the Korean War, thwarted much of Truman's fair deal. In 1952, the country elected Republican candidate and World War II hero, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, as president. The Republicans won Congress, and Rayburn was relegated to minority leader of the House. Two years later, the Democrats regained the majority in Congress, and Rayburn returned to the Speaker's chair. Although they were from different parties, Rayburn and Eisenhower worked well together. Rayburn realized that as Speaker, he had a responsibility to do what was best for the country, even if that meant finding common ground with the Republican leader. One such occasion was the Civil Rights Act of 1957. People were beginning to demand action against segregation and racial discrimination, especially in the area of equal voting rights. Although the issue threatened to split his political party, Rayburn supported the Republican-sponsored bill because he believed the Constitution gave everyone a right to vote. His support of the measure assisted in its passing, the first civil rights legislation in nearly a century. By this time, Rayburn served as a mentor to up-and-coming politicians such as Texan Lyndon Baines Johnson. LBJ became Senate Majority Leader in the 1950s, and together, Rayburn and Johnson effectively ran Congress. This relationship came into play in 1960, when Democratic presidential candidate John Kennedy recognized Johnson's usefulness and offered him the vice presidency. Rayburn urged his protege to accept the offer and played a key role in sealing the agreement between JFK and LBJ as the Democratic Party nominees. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Recognizing the respect Rayburn garnered from Congress, President Kennedy realized he would need his help if his new frontier programs were to succeed. Rayburn began what he called the greatest fight of my life. In January 1961, Rayburn successfully brokered a vote to expand the House Rules Committee, which in turn allowed for the passage of Kennedy's programs. It was Rayburn's last legislative victory and one of his sweetest. By that summer, Rayburn's health had declined, and battling cancer, he returned home to Bonham, where on November 16, 1961, he passed away. Dignitaries and presidents ventured to Bonham to pay tribute to a giant of American politics. He was Mr. Speaker to those in Washington and around the globe, but around his district, he was simply Mr. Sam. To me, he was just my Uncle Sam. You know, when he'd come to Dallas to visit and come to our home, my friends would be there, I and mean, they all called him Uncle Sam. He was just kind of an ordinary uncle to everybody. Uncle Sam, Mr. Sam, Mr. Speaker. Sam Rayburn's accomplishments are many, but why is Sam Rayburn important today? Speaker Rayburn's importance lies not just in the outstanding record of legislative accomplishment in his leadership as Speaker, but he had an unmatched record of public service and dedication. The character, the exemplary behavior, and just the record of accomplishment is unsurpassed and may never be surpassed by any future speaker. Sam Rayburn's legacy lives on in two institutions dedicated to preserving his memory. The Sam Rayburn Library and Museum was designed and built by Speaker Rayburn as a gift to the people of Fannin County. Operated by the Center for American History, University of Texas at Austin, the museum features exhibits that focus on Sam Rayburn's political career and long-lasting accomplishments. The Sam Rayburn House Museum, opened in 1975, is operated by the Texas Historical Commission. Sam Rayburn built the home in 1916 on a 122-acre farm just west of Bonham and lived there with family members until his death in 1961. The home, with later additions and remodeling by Rayburn, exists today as a 20th century time capsule that preserves the Rayburn family home as it was at the time of Rayburn's death. Enjoy your time here in Bonham, and thank you for your interest in Sam Rayburn, a speaker and public servant for all generations.